Right, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Real Table Talk. It's, su good afternoon it's Sunday, <laughs> it's five o'clock and I need to just move this. Just one second. There we go. I have got both going at the same time, but here we are. It's Sunday, it's five o'clock and Real Table Talk. We are back and look at this. Wow. We have got our guest speaker and also our guest presenter with us today. So yeah, this is fabulous. So welcome Delroy, I will come over to you in one minute. And thank you so much everyone for tuning in with us every Sunday at five o'clock to hear different stories to inspire you. Before we start the show today, I have got a big, massive, massive announcement. I've got to share it with you all. If you don't know already, <clears throat> we have been nominated, Real Table Talk, woohoo, have been nominated for a Windrush Awards. <laughs> oh my goodness, I am super excited by this this is absolutely fantastic so please i will put the link in our comments so please go into the comments find leslie o'connor and book and share it share it don't be shy karen is sharing so share that on so thank you so much for the nomination it is so well appreciated so like I said, my name is Leslie O'Connor and I am the founder of Real Table Talk and we are here to talk to you, <laughs> to have fun for the next hour. So let's get started. It's not just about me because we have a beautiful co-host, Marcia Hilton. Please Hello. introduce yourself, Marcia. Hello everyone. Yes, I am Marcia Hilton. And just a little bit about me, I am a certified coach and I specialise in trauma recovery and emotional resilience for women after narcissistic abuse. I'm also the um, CEO of Life Inspired Wellness, which is all about supporting women find their way back to themselves using tools and strategies to guide them towards their own transformation and healing. So that's me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marcia. Thank you. And also, we have our guest presenter, Delroy. Delroy, Yay. thank you so much for coming on. And please Welcome. introduce yourself to our audience. Okay, yeah, my name is Delroy Hall. I'm a trained counsellor. I guess I specialise in loss, grief and bereavement, anxiety and depression. Um, I've also been a counsellor for over 30 years, also a trainer and teacher. And also, I... I've got a website called delwest.com and also I lead or run a Facebook live session on Tuesday evening, seven o'clock till about half past seven, a whole range of kind of human experiences, but from a counselling perspective and just offer hints and tips to help people get through difficulties. If people need to go to a GP, they should. If you need to see a therapist, you should, but it's just offering some strategies to help people during difficult times. And that's me in a very tiny nutshell. Oh, that's brilliant. It's good to be here as well. It's um, I didn't plan this at the beginning of the year, but here I am. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. well, I didn't plan at the beginning of the year, but here I am. So. Yeah. No, that's brilliant, Delroy. And Delroy, please, will you leave your details? Are you on that? Can you go into the comments? Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. And leave your details on there. So if people need to get in touch with you, yeah. And they've got all your information. That'd be brilliant. <laughs> Okay then, so wow, we have got a packed show today. We have got an amazing, amazing woman on the platform with us today to share her story with us all. Please welcome Gloria Henley. Wow. Welcome Gloria. And I know you was looking forward to being in the studio today at UTM, Unity Through Music Recording Studio. We do apologise, we are having a few technical problems, but we will be back in the studio very shortly. 
So keep a lookout for that, but we will keep also keep you informed. But Gloria, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And let me just share your story, well, some of your, your bio with our audience today. So Gloria worked as a community midwife in Leeds for over 30 years. We need to know all about that. Wow. After retirement, she worked as a care coordinator in Kirklees for 10 years. Her involvement in Leeds and community has been varied and extensive. She has chaired her voluntary organisations, including St Kitts and Nevis associations. The Leeds West Indian Charitable Trust, West Yorkshire, what was that? I can't read that word, ecumenal is it? Anyway. Ecumenical. Ecumenical. Ecumenical Council. I'm dyslexic, I struggle with words. <laughs> I will put my hands up to it as well. And also the Mary C. Cole Nursing Association. She has served as a magistrate on the Leeds bench for over 20 years, which she found very challenging at times. Wow, that must be very interesting, Gloria. While working full-time as a midwife, she studied and obtained her master's degree in social science at Bradford University. Gloria is passionate about health and beauty, health of the black community and has in her past arrange workshops and sem seminars on health issues that affects the lives of black women. Gloria is committed Christian and has served as a lay minister in the, is it Wesley, Wesley Church in Wesleyan. Leeds for many years? She has also recently become an author and has written two books and is working on her third. Woohoo! Wow, <laughs> Gloria. Oh my God. Goodness, where do we start? This is amazing, amazing. Can I just ask, can I just say, first of all, congratulations on your achievements of writing a book, doing your masters, being a midwife, being on the bench. This is, it's beautiful. So thank you so much for coming on Real Table Talk and sharing all your life experience with us all. That's really nice. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. You're uh, welcome. So my first question, Gloria, please uh -huh. let us know what was, what's it like? In fact, sorry, before I get to the first question, let me just tell our audience, this show is about you. We want you to interact with us, okay? So any questions you may have, please leave them in the comments and Marcia is going to read them out for us. So don't be shy, leave a question in the comments and also like this page and share it. Share it with somebody else who might not have Facebook and they want to go onto the YouTube channel or they want to watch it later, just share it. Thank you very much. So do -do -do -do, our first question, <laughs> Gloria. What was it like being a midwife? Um, I loved being a midwife. I loved it. But it was very challenging, as, as you read there. Um, I suffered silently sometimes um, with racism, not only from patients, but also from management. Um, and I'm not going to talk too much about it. Ask me anything you like, but I have got the book and it's all in there. It's a great big book <laughs> <laughs> and it's called Everybody's Midwife um, because that's how I felt. I felt I was everybody's midwife and I've had highs and I've had lows. I could tell you some hilarious stories, but I can also tell you some um, frustrating stories. Um, about midwifery, community midwifery, especially. Yeah, wow. Oh, you just, you've got to give us a little bit more. So let the readers like go out and get your book, but just give us a little bit more because he's saying about racism. What was, what was that, what was that like? 
Okay, I was trained as a, a, a midwife actually in Leeds. I wasn't trained as a nurse in Leeds. I came up, um, I came, when I first came to, to Britain, um, I was based in Basingstoke in Hampshire. Okay. Um, and if I can quickly say, I came over from the Caribbean to train as a nurse for three years. It's only when I got here, along with other black nurses, we found out um, the training was only for two years. And the two years, we were going to be awarded with a state enrolled nurse certificate. Now, I, I had no idea what that was because I came to be trained as a state registered nurse. And uh, we were annoyed, angry, upset when we found out the training was only for two years. Um, but we couldn't do anything about it because we had to surrender our passports. Wow. Them. So we felt trapped. They wouldn't release us. But whilst I was training, um, I was looking around. And when I left there, when I qualified, I didn't actually practice as an enrolled nurse because my parents sent me to train for three years and then back to the Caribbean. Mm. But I couldn't go back with that useless certificate. Wow. So the hospital in London um, who I had to do a further two and a half years to, to get the state registered nurse certificate. And then I wanted to be a midwife. So I had to train another year. So the two years that I came to this country for, uh, to train for two years, I ended up, my training was for five and a half years. But I was trained here in Leeds in a hospital called Hyde Terrace, but it, it's part, it was part of the, the Leeds General Infirmary, but it's demolished now or changed into something else. Right. And when I was at uh, training South in Hampshire, I did not experience any racism at all uh, because people just accepted us. We were like a novelty to them. So they treated us well came to Leeds High Terrace, I encountered my first uh, racism. And uh, I tell everybody this, is that when I was um, asked to go into a delivery room to deliver a lady, her husband was sat at the bedside. And as I walked in, I greeted them, because I'm a cherry person, and got my stuff ready to deliver. And I could hear them muttering, but I wasn't taking much notice because I had a job to do. But as I turned around to the bed and I said, right, it's time for your baby to be born. The husband said to me, don't touch my wife. I said, pardon? Don't put your black hands on my wife. And I was shocked. And I, I didn't respond to him. I went straight back out to my, my senior and I, I told of the remark and she came into the room. Oh no, before I went out, he said, we, we came over here to get away from the likes of you. Do you know, it's only years after I was reflecting that this guy was abusive towards me. But in that situation, I didn't, as a young midwife, I just trained. Anyway, my, my boss came in with me and I, I foolishly thought she was going to read him the riot act. But she turned to him and says, okay, I will deliver your baby. Um, the midwife will leave the room. And she ordered me out of the room. I was upset. I was angry. I was... I had all the emotions floating around. Um, at the end of the shift, I went to her and asked for an explanation. And she said to me, I am in charge of this delivery suite and I make the decisions. And I went home in floods of tears because there was no, in, I mean, you have to take into consideration this is a long time ago, so there was nobody. Yeah. I could go and make a complaint. Yeah. Plus the fact 
there weren't many black people around to share this experience with. So that was my very first case of um, racism. Then I worked into the, in the community. And I mean, it was there almost every day. I counted it by using humor because my, my aim was to look after the mother and baby. One instant, I went to the door of a house in Eastern Park. Now, I don't know how well you, you guys or people know Eastern Park. Yeah. It's, it's, can I use this word? Dodgy. It's a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I knocked on the door and this uh, scruffy looking gentleman came out and I said, hello, I'm the midwife. I don't want you in here. And I said, why not? And he's looking at me, I said, is it because I'm fat? He's not answering. I said, is it because I have this big afro? Because I wanted to break him down, you know. He said, no, I don't like black people. <laughs> and I said, I don't like them either. So let me. <laughs> and I said to him, why don't you like black people? He said, we y'all came over here and took away our jobs. Wow. And I said, did you want to be a midwife then? Look yourself up. He said, no, but you all take all the jobs. And by this time, I am becoming angry, but I have to stay calm because as I said, I want to get to the baby. And, and I didn't want to stay on the, stay, at the doorstep arguing with him. So I said, I shouted to his wife. I said, can you ask your husband to let me in please? Don't know what was said, but um, I actually got into the house. But you know, I didn't turn my back on this man because apart from being angry, I was scared. Wow. House now in his space. Yeah. So wow. gave care and, and left. And I went to my, my supervisor and I told her, the, I, I related the incident to her. And I said to her, I'm not going back to that house. And for me, no uncertain terms, I had to go back. Or else I would face disciplinary um, action. And I said, sack me if you like, but I'm not going back. I said, and if you care that much, and I'm sorry, I said, you'd get up off your bottom and go and do it. And I just left her and I didn't go back but I reported it to the doctor. I reported it to the health, um, the health visitor. I covered myself. Mm -hmm. the, the, the word disciplinary action was mentioned. So I had to report it and write a report for myself. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. And I've had other, other um, racial incident where they just won't let me in. And, but my bosses never backed me up. Wow. Wow. What's changed now then? You know, so did, could you see a change from being in that job for like 30 years? Actually, sadly, not much has changed. Um, midwives, for a start, there aren't many black community midwives. When I, when I wrote, when I published my book, I sent a copy to the head of midwifery with a letter to say, this book will tell you how not to treat a black midwife. She, didn't res she hasn't responded. She never responded. But I also highlighted to her, there were only, when, when I was practicing, there were only half a dozen black, black midwives. And the, when I left, there were only two. There are only four. Mm. It's changed. Nothing has changed because um, I hear stories of the the especially Eastern Park. They don't want black people in their houses. Mm 
And these people have a right anyway, but had, had my bosses go with me to support me to say, you can't pick and choose, mm -hmm. you know, um, if you don't accept a black one, you won't get a white one. But that didn't happen. And sadly, it's not happening. Wow. Um, wow. That's just, that's just so sad. That's just so sad. And, you know, I um, heard, like, news of, like, young black women, like, dying in labour. What, what happened there? Why, why was that happening? Well, it, it, in my days, and this sounds really old, we, black midwives, gave better care than the white midwives. And I'll tell you why I, I could say that. Because we, I would go to a case where I was not the, the midwife, but I'm relieving the booked midwife. And the, the, the lady would say to me, please don't give me back to my own midwife. Please keep me because I gave her the care. And my colleagues accused me of overcaring. I've never heard anything so stupid in all my life. Wow. How could one overcare? Because I took time to listen. Yeah. This is not happening these days. Yeah. If not getting the same care that we gave them because women were, um, we cared for mid women in their own homes up to 10 days. They weren't allowed to go out. We gave them care. In the first three days, we went twice in the day to have, look, have a look at them. Now they're discharged from hospital maybe six hours after and probably two days, they, they're out shopping. You know, they don't get the same care. Mm. And, and uh, they, whenever my ex-patients meet me, they go, when are you coming back, Gloria? Wow. And not for a million dollars will you get me back out there. Wow. What so made the you stay there? Sorry? What, what made you stay there for that length of time? Oh, I loved it. Mm. I did. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a people person. Yeah. You know, and I, um, th there are times when I'd be driving home at nights, um, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, my shift finishes at four, five o'clock, but I'd be going home at seven. And one evening I was almost home when I suddenly remembered a lady and I turned around and went back and she mm -hmm. stood at the door and said, I knew you would come. <laughs> You know, so how many children have you delivered? How many babies? You know, everybody asked me that question, but, and, and I didn't keep a record. Well, yes, I kept a record, but you had to hand your, your books in right. every year, you know? Yeah. So, it, but it'll be well over a hundred. Wow. Well over a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the, again, I, I've recorded it. The memorable ones are at home. Yeah. Home births, where um, in, in, in the 80s, they weren't encouraged, women weren't encouraged to have their babies at home. They had to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I used to encourage my ladies to have their babies at home because it was, it was always enjoyable. Yeah. Ooh, interesting, interesting. I've got a few comments here that I'd like to, to read. Um, and some questions. So um, it's good to see you. Um, and Jackie Walker says um, that you are someone who has so much to offer us younger ones up and coming, and that um, you were the one that led the way for us. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And Sandra, San, uh, Sandra Stanley Herbert says hi and welcome. And she's also, um, Jackie's also said, when was the first time that you began to ever feel like giving up? Um, I can only remember one time when, when I drove home, six o'clock in the evening, I'm off shift, but my, my telephone rang and I was asked to go to a case and I said, but I haven't had anything to eat, I've just come home, you have to go. Isn't there another midwife? You have to go. 
And, you know, I went without eat, having anything to eat and ended up staying all night, delivered the baby. Wow. Yeah. Had two hours sleep and then had to go back to work the following day. And I'm thinking, do I love my job this much? Mm -hmm. Myself? You know, but yes, I did. And there's another case of um, I, the hospital rang me with a, a patient and she said, you need to do this evening visit, but the lady does not want a black midwife. <laughs> and I said, actually, I am black, you know. She said, oh, ah, bring you back. She didn't actually ring me back. It was my boss who rang me back. And she said, Sister Hanley, you have to go to that lady. I said, but I am black. <laughs> she says, you have to go. You're the only one. I said, what if he attacks me? She said, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Wow. I said, but I am standing on the bridge now. That's when I thought, you know, my, my life's not worth this. No. But then I'm a Christian. I prayed. I prayed. I prayed. And I visited that house for 10 days. And the husband watched me every day. He never said a word. And then one day, I mean, after this, you'll know that I, I can say things without thinking. I said, for me, in my notes, it says, you're Irish. I said, you should be in favor of me because they don't, white people don't like you, they don't like me, and they don't like dogs. So you should be, you know, supporting me. He didn't whisper a word. At wow. the end of the days, I said to him, I'm so happy to believe in your house. I said, because you, uh, you're the most obnoxious person I've come across. And yeah. I, good for wow. you. I could be a bit lippy, you see, sometimes. Yeah. Gosh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Sorry, did you want to say something, Dalry? Well, yeah, two things, really. One, to ask, answer the question about, about surrendering your passport, what does that mean? But just to give you, well, you perhaps not ready, but maybe some of the listeners some insight, um, I'm doing some work for an NHS trust down south. And the very thing that you spoke about, the white bosses not supporting the black member of staff, is still happening today in 2021. Yeah. Wow. Um, a patient, it, literally on Wednesday, I had this Zoom conversation, a black, patient, uh, black member of staff escorting uh, a patient somewhere else in the hospital with a white member of staff, the patient said, I don't want this black person near me, all the rest of it. And all they did, they substituted there with somebody else. And what people realize or don't realize the impact it has on you yeah. mm -hmm. as an individual. And it doesn't, and those feelings doesn't end at the end of the shift. No. Yeah. It carries on for weeks and months and it yeah. eats away at who you are. So it's still, it's still happening. Sad. It's still happening. That's very sad. Yeah. However, your question, surrendering your passport, what did you mean? Um, the, I think that, well, we threatened to, to leave. Okay. We wanted to be trained for the three years. Right, okay. Um, and she told us the matron, in those days they had matron, mm -hmm. said we couldn't leave because we are contracted for two years and mm -hmm. bring our passport in. We had to take our passport to her. Wow. Kept them for the two years. Wow. Was that legal? I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I still, still don't know if it was the correct thing to do. But I suspect it wasn't legal. No. But the thing with the SEN, that you couldn't, you couldn't really get any promotion with the SEN. No. That was the thing. Uh, you, you couldn't get any... No, I was interested in nursing many, many years ago with the SEN because I was, I'm still old enough. I might look young, but I'm still old enough to remember the SEN. Um, but you couldn't get any promotion with the SEN. The SRN yeah. was the thing that really kind of uh, moved you on. Yeah. And only, only the black yes. nurses 
What SCN? Yes, of course. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Marcia. Yeah. No, I was just, just going to say, because I, I originally trained as an SDN, and most of us were, you know, were with the black nurses. So all, you know, pretty much all of us were the SDN. So like you said, there wasn't, I was actually going to say, you know, there weren't any room for, for promotion, you know, so, you know, so you had to go. And I think it was when they brought in that Project 2000, mm -hmm. and wanted to go and, and, and um, convert. convert, yeah. So that's what, that's what we, most of us had, had to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. interesting. And, and Project 2000 is not all that long ago. No, it's not. not. It's not. Yeah, we need really to remember the numbers. What, 20, 20 years ago? Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. That's, mm. yeah, not good. Yeah. Not good. So you've moved on from the from being a midwife, and then you're doing, you sat on the bench with um, the courts. How was that as a magistrate? Oh, Again, you wouldn't expect, uh, well, depends on, on your, your, your point of view, racism on the board, on the, the bench, but there was, and there still is, yeah? One, one example I can give you, we, we sat three magistrates to a bench, yeah? And one day there was, this was most unique, three black magistrates. Wow. And I thought, this is brilliant because the three of us are friends. Right. Do you know one white magistrate complained that if three black magistrates are sitting on a bench, they're not going to be um, given fair justice. Listen, fair justice, we got three of us are going to be thinking black together. So the, the, the guy who was the chair, God rest his soul, Travis, he's, he's now. Oh, no, Travis. Travis says, wait a minute. Three white magistrates sit every day because they're more of you than us. So are you giving justice? And, and this person went, oops, I hadn't thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But me, during that conversation, one person, one magistrate had already gone to the head to say she's not going to sit here and let three magistrate, black magistrate, go into court. So he came, he actually left his, his office and came up to confront us. Goodness. And then Travis pointed out to him, they're all white there, and they're all going down together. So he looked a fool then and left. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Wow. You how know, did you get into could, that? Sorry? How, how did you get into being a magistrate? Um, What's that journey like? Travis, who, who has um, gone off, he, he recruited me. OK. We, we are short of black people on the bench. Um, and it was, he thought it's something I would like to do. Bearing in mind, I'm a full-time midwife yeah. of two children, um, a lay minister, and I have all these other organizations that I'm chairing. Yeah. I didn't want another one, but it sounded something compelling. Mm. And, I, I thought about it and then applied and, and I had no, no, no problems in uh, sitting, but my interview, at my interview, they gave me the scenario with um, a black man in a, a, at a football match and uh, he was wearing a red shirt and he's in a crowd and a, um, violence broke out and they arrested the black man because they could see him throwing punches. And how would I deal with that? I said, for a start, if he's wearing a red shirt, he sticks out like a sore thumb. I says, and if he's the only black man, he sticks out like a sore thumb. I said, and if the police has any um, 
prejudice. He sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah, exactly. I said, why was he the only person that was arrested was a black man? Mm -hmm. Surely, if he was punching, others were punching as well. The lady who was the, on the interview panel says, I was um, uh, prejudiced against the, the police officers. And I said to her, you're talking nonsense. They're the ones who, who um, persecute us. You know, anyway, it was a long conversation. Oh. And I had to wait outside. And I thought, oops, Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get onto that bench. <laughs> but happily, I got onto the bench. Um, yeah. But when, whenever I sat and there were black um, defendants or accused, accusers coming, I used to worry. The, 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 because I want to give my decision based on what I hear, not what color the person is, yeah. but my colleagues would always say, oh, you, you are in, just in favor because he's a black person. And that used to really wind me up because I couldn't say that to them to say, well, you know, you're being lenient yeah. because he's yeah. a white person. Yeah. Because I was in the, the minority. Yeah. The, the prisoner in the dock one day called me a coconut. And my, my two white colleagues said, what does it mean? I says, I don't know, because I weren't going to tell them no. was abusive towards me, you know, um, because he was a black guy. But it, I, I didn't feel comfortable when black people came in. My ghetto clause was sometimes, if I knew them, if they were from the Chapeltown area, then, I would have to remove myself from the bench. Mm. It was good for me. Yeah. I was asked to sit in youth court. I, I declined because my two sons used to uh, socialize in Chapel Town and I didn't want to put them at risk. Mm. In fact, one came home and says, mom, you are known as Judge Judy. <laughs> So that told me not to sit in youth court. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just wasn't comfortable with my children socializing where some of the, the black youngsters were. Mm -hmm. yeah. But apart from you know, the, the racism, the, they would refer one, one chair, when a black guy came in, she said, these people are always in court. And I said, could you just rephrase that? Mm -hmm. She said, these black, and she stopped. I said, you do right. All right. I said, because I am one of these people. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. I've just got some, some, some questions for you here as well. Um, some comments that I'd just like to share with you. Um, Marcia Clark says, greetings to you. And she said, she takes her hat off to you having to put up with that kind of foolishness. And that you blazed a trail for those that came after you. Yeah. She also says, and I think it's referring back to when you were um, nursing, when you first came, and she says, I suspect it wasn't legal either, even back then. And that's what happens to people these days who've been trafficked into modern slavery. So they get wow. their passports taken. And Sandra Stanley, Sa Sandra Herbert says, do you need specific qualifications to be a magistrate? None whatsoever. None, and I wish more black people would go into it. I mean, you have to, you, you must know that it's a challenging um, um, contribution, a uh, challenging situation you're going into. But going, to, the more the, the black people go into it, the more you're, you, you're in a better position to see justice done, fair. Yeah. 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 One can't make a difference. I mm. hear one could make a difference but one can't make a difference mm -hmm. you know yeah but no you don't you don't need any qualifications because you're trained they, they train you you go right. oh countless number of training yeah mm -hmm. okay well very interesting well yeah i used to be a policewoman 
and so it was it was really hard I did it in the Met I was down in London and working down in the Met I had two small young children but I found that um, my own black people they were hard on me they were hard you know because I was I was a seller I was this because you know I was arresting I was like you've done something wrong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah it's um it's hard work and you know we do we need more people in there you know to have a change to have a change yeah, yeah. so from then you've been You've been a midwife for 30 years, you're a magistrate, you've written your own books, you've done charity work. What, what do you do in your free time? What do you do? What's your hobbies? What is it you, what you like for Gloria? You're quite- well, lo I love cooking. Yeah. I have and orders of, of uh, recipe books. I would just go into my kitchen and open one and says, I'll give that one a try. I love cooking. And recently, I- and the, and the lockdown has been brilliant because I can try out recipes. Yeah. And I tried out this beetroot cake. Mm. It was nice. wonderful, yeah. you know? So th that's my pace of resistance now. I, 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 I try it out and I take it to church. Yeah, nice. And the following day I'll say, okay, you guys are still alive, which meant it was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Uh, Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Good. No, I made time for my. It's not. It wasn't all work, you know. I've yeah. been. Oh, I've been on three cruises. I've, I've been. Wow. Aiders. You know, I've been. I, I go places. Yeah. But I love working, and yeah. I loved working. Yeah. And how did how do you find the lockdown? What was the lockdown like for you? Oh, lockdown is wonderful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it wonderful, Gloria? Well, I don't know who's listening, so I can't say, but I don't have to get dressed if I don't want to get dressed. Mm -hmm. That's a plus. Yeah, we like yeah. that. Yeah. And I I now I could um stream up my meetings. If I felt that some meetings were unnecessary, I don't go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I felt that people were visiting me too often. <laughs> but no, I enjoy lockdown because I have been able to cook meals for myself and down and enjoy my meals. When I was working, I couldn't do that. Yeah. Diet was rubbish. Now I have a very good diet and you know, I make time for myself and I can pamper myself when yeah. I want to. Yeah. Marcia Clark says, go on with the beetroot cake. <laughs> <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really nice. And it's very simple to me. I mean, we're all Caribbeans and you just get all your ingredients and put them in all together. It's no... At five minutes interval, you put this, oh, yeah. put them all together. It's very simple. Yeah. You just, and you bake it mm -hmm. for well, about 20 minutes. Yeah. I like beetroot. I've never Me thought too. about beetroot cake, but I do like beetroot. It's yeah. interesting. So and, you're wrong about, you about the fresh beetroot, aren't you? Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's interesting. George, George, uh, just, just um, a thought about the beetroot. I don't know about anybody else, but I love salads. Yeah. But if I don't have beetroot in the salad, I get a sugar craving. Ah. But mm. beetroot in the salad stops a sugar craving. Yes, right. beetroot is good for you. Yeah, yeah I love yeah. beetroot. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I not only put it in my cake, I make a, a smoothie with yeah. it. Yeah. And I also yeah. make a soup with it. Mm. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Beetroot soup, soup with yeah. feta cheese in it. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, really Caribbean that, uh, Gloria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia, Georgia Bartlett says she can vouch for the beetroot cake. She says it's absolutely <laughs> delicious. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
Oh, that's it now, Glory. You've got you've got to make yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> we want some of this cake. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> If you have me back when you're in the studio, because I, 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 I've written my, as you said in my um, intro, I've written uh, my first book, which was, it, it's, it's called This Is Your Life. And it's a record of who you are, you know? And um, it, it's really handy to have because uh, in the community, when someone died, they go, well, what did mama want? What song she liked and stuff like that. In this book, you record all that. Have you seen a copy of it, Marcia? I have, actually, yeah. No, I haven't. It's, it's still on Amazon as well. Yeah, it's on Amazon, yeah. 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 But will you, will you leave uh, your details in the comments so then we can... We Don't can be dark. The... I can't do stuff like <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can leave them in the comments. We will yes, leave yes, them yes. in the comments. <laughs> and that's so then and, people can get the link to your And book. then my, my other book will be... Um, a sort of autobiography of me, of the real. Wow. But I've left out the naughty bits. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that would be fantastic. Can, yeah. can, I, can I just mention um, as well, I just want to ask you, Gloria, because I know, you, you know, the nursing profession, and I know that you were part of the RCN, and I yeah. think they recognised you, didn't they? They did. A little bit about that. So yes. Yeah. Um, I got a call one day to say you're invited to this um, presentation at a hotel in Leeds because you're going to be given an award. And I thought, yeah, I pull the, the left one. <laughs> anyway, I showed up. Um, and I got myself dressed in a suit, you know, overdressed. And I went to this hotel and they were all, you know, and I didn't see a list with any names. So I'm thinking, okay, fool's errand, but never mind, there's plenty of food here, so I'm going to eat this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm sat there at this table, and he's reading this, this thing. And I'm thinking, hey, that sounds like me, but, but nobody's uh, spoken to me, so who knows about me? <laughs> and he said, and the, 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 uh, the person to receive this award is Gloria Hanley. So I'm sitting there and oh. watching them. And this girl said to me, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up and, uh, and I made a speech, but I, I, don't ask me what I said. <laughs> wow. I was so delighted. And it, it's, it's a, 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 um, an award for my contribution to commute the black community and I'm, I'm really proud took them 50 years to recognize that I, I was gonna say that, that that's quite un, I was gonna say unusual but you yes. know yeah yeah but it's beautiful that they did recognize you and that's that's, mm. huge. that's huge yeah yeah yes. no, that's fantastic mm. that's fantastic so who's your superhero uh, dead or alive it's up to you maybe see Cole. Oh, yes. So, yes. You tell yeah. us about this. Yes. Mary Seacole. Because, and as you know, she was a Black um, Jamaican nurse. Yeah. And she had no formal training, really. She trained from her mom. Yeah. In the 1800s, they didn't train nurses as such. Because I'm sure Florence Nightingale wasn't a fully trained person either. Mm. But Mary Seacole was there before her. Mm -hmm. And because Mary Seacole had all this medical knowledge when she when the Crimean War broke out in, I think it was 1855 or something like that. She happened to be in London and she went to Queen Victoria to volunteer her services to go to the war to help the British soldiers. And Queen Victoria turned it down. Wow did not deter this woman. She paid her own way there and went and opened a guest house. She didn't go to any hospital. She opened a guest house and she treated, she used her, her guest house to treat British soldiers, mm. you know, the, the wounded ones, she, with no, no, no med medicine from the hospitals. Yeah? yeah. When, when people um, write about her, they write about her as though 
she was um, part of Florence Nightingale's posse. Not mm -hmm. the sort. She did her own stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, then she came back here. She came back here actually broke. Mm -hmm. Back to England broke. But they, they, they had to even collect money to help her to um, live a, a, a decent life. You know? But why I admire her is that she was not going to be deterred. Yeah. You know, and she wanted to do, she wanted to give care to the, 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 the soldiers and she went. And that's, I model my life on her. Wow. To deter me if I want to do something. Shame though, in my early nursing, I wasn't like that. But I've grown, as I, as I grew, I became more um, radical. And it's because of that why I wasn't promoted in the midwifery, mm. because um, I challenged them. I was a very challenging person. And when, when I obtained my master's degree, I had to sort of play it down. I couldn't let people know. Why? Soon as they realized that I had a master's degree, management would, would if we were in a meeting, would shut me down and say, just because you have a master's degree, don't have the right to think you know this and think you know that. Wow. That to you know keep me in my place. Wow. They didn't wow. give me promotion. Wow. You know, but um and how many, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Gloria. How many years was you into that job when you and you done your master's? I did my master's. I went into midwifery, community midwifery in 1981. And I did my, I, I obtained my master's not until 2006. Wow. And let me tell you, during my master's, I asked them for study leave. They did not give me study leave. I had mm. my day off. Wow. Yet, other white midwives who were doing diploma were given study leave. I, was, I wasn't funded, I wasn't given study leave, you know, but I did it. It hasn't been an easy journey for me. No. You know, and one day I was given a lecture for SMA. And as I came out um, the car park to go into the, the NHS building down in town there, one of the tutors said to me, and I wish I was a violent person, but I, <laughs> she said to me, fancy you having a, a master's degree. And I said to her, yep, I've got one. You ain't got one and you can't take mine away from me. Mm -hmm. The last time I spoke to her. Wow. Now this, my, my, a nursing officer, a nursing officer saying this to me. Yeah. My superior. She is she was my superior. Yeah. She should have said, well done, Gloria. Yeah, congratulations. Yes. But it was jealousy. Yeah. See. You know, the, the, none, none of the nursing officers encouraged me. The 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 one, there was a vacancy for supervisor of midwives. In the whole of West Yorkshire, there were no black supervisor of midwives. Mm. I saw the vacancy, but I was determined not to apply for it. My boss called me into the office, sat me down, made me fill out the application form. She told me she was on the panel, which meant, you know, it's a foregone conclusion. I came through that door and I said to myself, if I was a shredder, I would say, why are you putting me in here? Because I knew she would submit my application form. Wow. Shortlisted. Wow. They, wow. Were, they, they were all, they all opposed me, but they couldn't shake me off. I was in their faces all the time. Wow. Very sad. Very sad. And I'm sure it still goes on. I was going to say, sadly. Yeah. No, unfortunately, it's it, it has been. Yeah. Wow. 
Mm. Um, I, I guess what, what you're saying really um, is nothing new. And I, and I don't know the audience who's listening, so I'm going to be very careful what I say. And maybe after this, Leslie, the, um, <laughs> the popularity of your show might, might go down or might go back on. I think um, I'll, I'll say two things. Quite often, uh, others see us as a threat. Mm. And my sadness is that we don't know how good we are. Yeah. Yeah. That's my sadness often. Yeah. We don't know how good we are. And I think it was Marcus Garvey who made the comment that, that he says, for you folks who say that we're no good and we're dumb, you expend a lot of energy trying to keep us in our place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah it's, it's sad to hear. Yeah. And I have a very, not, not for me, but a friend of mine within the last five, six years asked for study to do extra study. Uh, he was refused for three years. He did it on his, he did it, but on his own. He didn't tell them. And uh, he sat his um, viva and I said, what are, the, what are they going to say when they find out? He said, oh, I'll be all right. Anyway, they, there was a job that was going and his boss said, you can't really apply for this because you've not got a doctor. He said, oh, yeah, but I have. Mm -hmm. Well, woo! In, the, in the office, you're deceitful, you're trustworthy, you're yeah. untrustworthy. We can't trust you. Why didn't we know about this? He said it was terrible. Yeah. Wow. But, yeah. But I think as Glory saying, you have to do what you have to do. And yeah. I, I think going back to your point earlier on, Glory, I think I'd say this one can make a difference, but it's costly. Mm -hmm. You must be prepared to sacrifice and make the cost. Yes. Um, so and, and the cost can be your health, and then you'd have to put a major question mark. Yeah. Your cost could be, you know what? They may they may sack you from your job. They'll they'll find up they'll find things to get rid of you. Um, but I think sometimes you just have to you have to pave a way. Um, yeah. yeah. So you have to pave a way. So. Oh, uh, I have paved a way for. Yes. Oh, you have. Yes, you have. You have. Definitely. I'm, I'm going to ask you, Gloria. What would you say if somebody's listening? All that you've gone through. So you've you've kind of you've got the scars. You've got the wounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're still encouraging black people to be a part of either midwifery, nursing, or uh, magistrate. What would you say in hindsight? What would you say that would be really helpful to kind of help them through this? You know, mm. some of the obstacles that are still there. Yeah, yeah. You need someone who you can talk to. Mm. In in my time, I had nobody to talk to. Mm. Um, you need another person you need another person to encourage you mm. yeah. strange enough when when i was going through um racism there was one woman i felt i could talk to and she happened to be white mm. because i said to her what is it why is it i'm not being promoted and she said to me um one you're challenging two you're black and 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 the third one, you're a woman. Yeah. Mm. And I thought, that's good. I, I, I appre appreciated that. Mm -hmm. She found out that they were discriminating against me because of my color. You need somebody to talk to. And, and now I see more black people are in the system so we can be supportive one towards another. Yeah. The downside to this sometimes is, is when you go to your own, they don't want to support you mm. for whatever reason. I've got my own theory, yeah. but I'll keep that for another time. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> got some more yeah, comments. Go ahead. So, um, ah, Jesse, you are an amazing Hi. woman, Maria. Um, Marcia Clark again, he said, it's awful hearing about what you've had to endure, Gloria, but still, that's what gives you the heart of Kunta Kinte. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, RJC again says, it's really interesting to, the, to listen to the esteemed Dr. Delroy Hall. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know who said that, but thank you. It's RJC, RJC dance. <laughs> okay, I don't know who they are, so, but thank you. There's, there's, a, there's another question. Let me just 
And it's actually relating to your book, actually, from Sandra Herbert. And she says, how can you get a copy, another copy of your book? A friend in London has asked for one. How can people get your book? She okay. says we're going to leave it in the comments. Yeah. I'm going to put the details over at Amazon. Yes. Put you, Marcia, you can, well, you both have my email. If they email me, because I, I still have 10 copies in my house. Okay. Okay. Oh. I can get to anybody. Um, and it's only £10 from my house. Yeah. If you turn to yeah. Amazon, sadly, you'll have to pay more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So we'll have a copy then. I love those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, Gloria. Yeah. You know, I tell you, we always get six o'clock. Where has the time gone already? No. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Gloria, before we go, let me just say thank you so much for coming on the platform and sharing your story with us all. It's, it's just been amazing. Very interesting to yeah. listen to. And you know what? It's nice to hear your story because then, you know, what we're going through, you know, is nothing to what, you know, you've been through and our families have been through, you know? So yeah. it's interesting. I know we're still, we are still feeling it in different ways. Mm. And it is hard in different ways, but yeah, very interesting. And thank you for sharing your story with us. And Delroy, thank you for coming on the platform. You're amazing. <laughs> thank you for the invitation. I don't know about amazing too, but thank you. You are amazing. Thank you. There is, there is, there is, there is a, um, something for you from RJC. It's Kathy Williams. And she says to Google RJC dance. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And we will be back. Marcia, sorry, is there anything else before we say good goodbye to everybody? Um, in terms of comments, no, everybody's just loving you, loving you, Gloria. Thank um, but you. What I, but what I would say is just how tremendous you are. So much love and respect out there for you. What a courageous woman you are. What an upstanding woman you are. And we just look up to you. You've just given Absolutely. me so much. And so thank you for coming on. And Marcia Clark says, so inspired to hear about your journeys, Gloria, and you also, Delroy. Oh, no, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you so much to our audience for tuning in with us. So, and we will be back same time next week, Sunday, five o'clock with another amazing guest. It's all about kickboxing. Hmm. interesting so whoever <laughs> wants to get fit we're going to be talking kickboxing so we will see you back here next week the 10th of october 5 p.m thank you so much thank and bye everyone bye bye, bye. 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 all the best <laughs>